are we recording yes we are so <clears throat> um it's a lot more it's a lot warmer in here um uh and just a pre as a precursor before i before i start on my subject today um i'm uh, i'm getting a sort of winter cough as i as i typically get so um uh, although i've enjoyed filming outdoors for the last few months the um uh, the sensible thing for me is to uh is to uh record at home in my improvised recording studio so um a bit heath robinson but it, it is what it is and uh it's it's warmer uh, a lot a lot warmer so um okay so what are we uh what are we uh talking about today well today is the uh i'm i'm discussing the result of the the ebay experiment the ebay experiment that i started a few months ago where i had two identical objects that were desirable and uh, desirable enough to to get some interest on ebay and uh, i wanted to i just wanted to demonstrate or or check for myself i mean it's only a sample of one so it's uh it is um not a not a not a, a um we can't read too much into it but essentially what i did i had these two items these two file effects jotters um and i decided to list one on ebay as a as a pseudo dutch auction and uh by that I mean I started at a very very high price uh, and the, stated my intent to go uh, to drop the price regularly until a until a, a buyer was found and once that had that that process had um, uh, had been fulfilled then I would list the the uh, the second one um as an as a normal ebay auction a seven day auction to see what the results would be in terms of price and the results are you can you uh, i've got a link on uh, uh, in the description below but the, but i've got them on screen as well so so the dutch auction item these are file facts jotters the, the, the dutch auction version if you like fetched 115 pounds here in the uk and the traditional ebay auction uh, fetched 62 pounds it reached 62 pounds so there is considerable difference there now i would say that was going to be unless you have a, a really fierce uh, a really fierce bidding war between two parties that is th that kind of pans out that that is the result i expected but it was an interesting exercise because it's very rare to have two extremely rare items that are guaranteed to generate some interest um in a similar condition so that's that that is what we that's that's what we had um what i would say is i'm i'm very very pleased that uh that that, that they both sold obviously um there's no guarantee on ebay um but i wanted to just briefly touch on uh ethics with regards to um <clears throat> uh selling with the intention of making a profit uh, it's uh it's um i mean clearly there are there are file effects dealers out there cons in, including me um <clears throat> we're not charities we're there to make money but what i what i think is a reasonable way of conducting myself in in this arena where um there are a lot of enthusiasts for this product. It's not like um, 
an iPhone or you know a ubiquitous item that that, that has uh, almost an infinite number of uh, a, a, a infinite supply these can be very very desirable items uh, there's a finite number in the world and um, well I, I'm going to touch on the world hold that thought about the world but um, I have been searching my soul maybe that's a bit too over dramatic but uh, but I've been searching my soul I'm making the uh, I'm making my uh, camera whoa there <laughs> um, it is really really Heath Robinson here I've been searching my soul with regards to how can I how can I conduct myself in a on a effectively a global marketplace or although I, I only sell to the UK um, but I'll mention that briefly later um, how can I how can I make it fair not only for me as a as a dealer but also for me as someone who is an enthusiast myself and I do, I do understand the frustration of. I mean, I I have many interests other than just filofaxes, and 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 I regularly buy things from eBay. And my perception of value will differ from other buyers, and sometimes the item I want and I goes for far more than my my perception of value in my mind and i you know it, it is frustrating isn't it especially if you're what you're bidding for is a, is a one-off particularly or very very rare and you may have been looking for it for years you know how frustrating is that i understand that but one thing that i would well there's two two things um but let me let me talk about the my my policy my ethics how how i how i how I get round this issue. Um, I think it's wrong to have something listed on eBay or, or indeed any other in, um, selling platform where it just sits there for month after month after month at the same price because it's, it, it's, it causes too much angst, causes too much... I wouldn't say misery, but but it but it's just so annoying, isn't it? Um, a, an auction is fine. I mean, every buyer likes an auction unless you want it straight away, you know. But there's a there's pros and cons. I mean, I buy I buy fixed price I, fixed price items, but I also buy items at auction. There's a certain element of excitement, even after all these years of of buying and selling at auction. I mean, I'm retired now, but I started. I started buying and selling at auctions, bricks and mortar auctions, as a teenager, and that was a long time ago. A long time ago. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think from a point of view of fairness, um, what I like to do is start an auction at one penny. Sometimes I include the postage in that price so that it's a real, a real bargain. Sometimes I don't. I just uh, add the. Uh, I just. I just add the. Uh, add the postage at cost in addition. But quite often I. I start auctions at one penny, and uh, there's no reserve. And um, you know I'm. I am taking the risk of a, a, a massive loss if it goes for one penny, and and occasionally that does happen. Um, but I think it's very. I think it's a. It's a fair. I think it's a fair way of conducting business. Um, in a, in an in an era where. Um, there needs to be bargains. Then that there. If there were no bargains on eBay, the the the, the platform would fail. There has to be the chance of a bargain, and and I want to play my part as a conscientious seller. Um, and obviously that extends to the way I pack items as well. But I, I don't really want to blow my own trumpet about how what a great seller I am. You know, I'm just just a 
Um, I'm just a guy that wants to uh, try and wants to reduce as far as possible the the risk of disappointment uh, that people may experience when they they successfully bid for something and they've invested their time and energy and money into this item and then through poor packaging it, it arrives and it you know um well it's just just it's just not on is it um and as a buyer i i take that risk every week uh because sellers through naivety or or complacency or or you know they, they they don't they don't they don't pack as well as I do, um, but uh, on the flip side, so that that is my that's my philosophy with uh, traditional eBay auctions: start very low, no reserve, and um, and let the market decide. You know, and on the flip side of that, I uh, I do occasionally list things all sorts of things um, not just file of facts but antiques I have uh, other eBay channels as well um, I list things as a, as a fixed price as I buy it now uh, but what I do this is the critical thing um, I make sure that uh, I, I start at a I started at a price that is higher than I think I the the object will uh, achieve, but I excuse me. I just uh, reduce. I have a I have a, a I have a chart. I actually have a chart in one of my file faxes, which tells me um, not only uh, how what the reduction should be, but when I should reduce it. Um, so I like to be organised so I don't forget to reduce the, the price of an item that I sell. And effectively it's, uh, I mean, Goo it's uh, Goo Dutch auctions are a, an interesting thing. It's worth Googling because uh, it, it's, uh, it's a tradition that is kind of, um, it's not as, not as common as a, as, a, as a traditional English auction, as it were. But it's, uh, it's, I think it's quite exciting both for the buyer and the seller because if you are reducing the price regularly then it is uh, there is that that uh, that agony that angst that 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 frisson of uh, not frisson of excitement but frisson of uncertainty who is effectively going to put their hand up first and that is the person that walks away with the item um and i uh, i th i think that's very fair and and with my fixed price items i uh, there is a genuine you can't drop something all the way down to a penny as i record this the uh, the, the the lowest price of a fixed price item is a, is a pound i believe um there is there is the, you have to be committed you have to be committed uh if you if you do this to drop the price continuously uh even to the point where you make a loss on the item because you have a commitment to potential buyers uh, not just the current buyers, but also buyers in the future who are looking at your the way you work, the way you sell, um, the items, the other items you have. If you can instil um, confidence in those potential buyers, then th th it may pay dividends for the seller, and obviously it's uh, it's an advantage to the buyer because. Um, certainly in this particular case with filofaxes uh, I mean it might be vintage bicycle parts uh, on another channel but certainly on this channel it is uh, filofaxes that we're talking about um, other models other makes are available of course um, it gives them confidence that uh, that they can um, uh, revisit your site um, and see what you have for sale and and that 
one of the reasons why I, and that's one of the that's the main reason why i have a link in the description of each video so that people can have a quick look and see see what i'm selling that given week um and many of those items will be available as a bite now so you could, within seconds of looking and seeing the item the file effects that you that might take your fancy you can you can you, you'll be able to buy it immediately i mean that is the immediacy of a fixed price item being able to buy that um uh buy that uh, without having to wait seven days in an auction is is uh is is compelling you know you cannot deny the the uh the um you know the retail therapy that 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 Im Im imbues um i feel that myself with bicycles <laughs> um model trains um all sorts, all sorts of things, all sorts of things. Vintage, vintage antique teacups. You know, gracious, 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 gracious. All sorts of things. Um, uh, sometimes furniture, uh, um, but uh, I'm digressing here and waffling. But um, what I'm, uh, what I'm, what I'm pleased about is the fact that um this just getting back to the experiment uh it confirms in my mind even though i i knew it already that for me as a as a seller probably the best way to go is a is a pseudo dutch auction as as previously explained rather than a uh, rather than an english auction uh, but I I, I I intend to do a mixture. But I'm I'm minded. I'm minded. That's a great phrase, isn't it? I'm minded to. Um, I'm minded to sell the majority of my file effects via a pseudo Dutch auction in the future, because um, business is business. Um, anyway. Let me, uh, if you're still holding that thought about world, the world, the world market, um, I'm just going to end this with a little explanation as to why, after having been a, a, a worldwide exporter for many, many years, why I, I, I no longer sell abroad. That is a shame. I do understand that. If you're, if you're, I, I have I do get the occasional in fact I got one this uh, this particular um uh, with this file of fats jotter that, that that I've just sold um a few days ago uh and the guy said look uh, uh, do you, do you, do you sell to where he lived in another country um and I and I had to apologize to say no I'm sorry I, I I don't, but I used to, and and the reason why I don't is very very simple. Um, certainly here in the UK, um, uh, this isn't a Bre this isn't a Brexit issue. Brexit is separate, but a lot of people confuse the new VAT regulations with Brexit. But uh, because especially since certainly in the UK they came into force on exactly the same day i.e. 1st of January last year 2021 um, whereas uh, the rest of Europe um, uh, rather sensibly decided to to separate the two dates and uh, and they, they generally uh, introduced their VAT changes uh, in July I think it was the 1st of July last year um, but essentially, if you are a seller in the UK, if you're a seller in the UK, um, your if your turnover is less than eighty five thousand pounds, then you do not have to register for VAT. And the advantage of that is that your you you don't have to increase your prices to reflects the fact that you have to collect the in this case 20 percent tax the vat um the value added tax for um 
on behalf for and on behalf of HMRC in the UK. So there is a there is a financial advantage with being under the radar, not under the radar, but but limiting your turnover below eighty five thousand. But as from the first of January last year, if you want to export. You come under the rules uh, pertaining to well. There's a there's a new rule. Effectively, that eighty five thousand is no longer eighty five thousand. It's one thousand euros, and this is this isn't profits. This is turnover. So, effectively, unless you're just the you know sell the occasional item, you're going to be uh, exceeding the. Uh, you're be going to be. Uh, thrusting through the uh, 1000 pound barrier sorry 1000 euro and um and and that effectively means that uh, every everything's more so everything's going to be more expensive and not only that but the complexities of the paperwork are so um draconian um that many many companies uh not just uh, small scale sellers like myself but larger ones as well uh, don't uh, they, they, they no longer subscribe to the notion of um, exports uh, so uh, so unfortunately I, I'm, I'm unable to uh, to export uh, which, is a, which is a shame but uh, that might change in the future but I'm to be honest I mean I'm retired now so it's uh, it's the, the the advantage of keeping on um, keeping within the UK domestic market is uh, is is you know uh, is for me it's uh, it is uh, it is what it is um, anyway um, I didn't mean it to be this long uh, but um, I'm uh, I managed to get through it without uh, oh, I'm gonna cough now. <coughs> I'm um I've got a winter cough which I which I get each year and uh um I'm using a um I'm using a microphone close to my mouth so that I don't have to project my voice so much and that helps me if I project my voice too much uh it kind of tickles my my uh voice box as it were and uh, and then and then I end up coughing and coughing and coughing so that's not good so so I'm um, I'm everything's subject to change uh, as we all know but I'm just experimenting with uh, this kind of Heath Robinson setup at the moment and uh, and we'll we'll see how we go hopefully hopefully um, because I'm in the warm and dry uh, I'll be able to uh, keep my winter cough at bay and uh, and produce. Uh, a, I've, I'm actually busy recording two two more videos as we speak, but uh, there's no there's no uh, timetable here. But uh, um, thank you for if you're still uh, still listening. Thank you for your time. I appreciate that. And uh, until next time, goodbye.